We're back with the hot box going beyond the headlines with newsmakers. Tonight, Oregon Congressman Kurt Schrader, he held his first health care town hall meeting this morning. He has another one going on, in fact, over the phone right now. And a third town hall is on the schedule for tomorrow. That'll be in Oregon City. In between all that, the congressman stopped by our studios downtown to talk about the public option and what he's learning in his first term. Congressman, thanks for joining us. First of all, you wanted to hear from the public on your recess. <laughs> You're hearing from it. How did it go? Uh, this morning, I thought it went really, really well. We had over 300 some odd participants. Uh, people were passionate, uh, but I don't think unruly. It's good for us to hear from them, and they did a good job. What are you learning mainly from a town hall like this morning? Uh, so I think there's several different things. Uh, one is that uh, there's uh, uh, two big diverse camps about uh, uh, health care in general. Uh, the, the camp that feels that government shouldn't be involved in any way, shape, or form, and they're fine with what's going on right now. Uh, and then there's others that are concerned that uh, they can't afford the health care they have now. It's, the costs are going up too dramatically, and they want to give uh, access to those that have no insurance. And the trick for us is to find that middle ground. So public option is, seems to be the buzzword now. Where do you see that going? Because there are clearly camps that don't want anything to do with pu the public option, yet there are others who think this is really clearly a reasonable and rational way to go. Well, and I think that's where the public option came from in the first place on the House side. I think on the House side, a public option does survive. Uh, we'll see what happens on the Senate side and with the negotiations. But uh, the idea of having competition is tough to argue against. Even if you like private enterprise, why not have uh, a public option that competes fairly? A lot of the naysayers are saying, oh, Curry, it can't be done uh, fairly. Well, to read the bill and the amendments to the bill, they have to have their own reserve requirements, pay their own administration, they get no taxpayer subsidies except a little startup that they have to pay back, and they have to negotiate their own Medicare uh, uh, payment levels, just like the private insurer. So I don't think you know, having competition in the marketplace is a bad thing. What I hear an awful lot, and I'm sure you do too, how are we going to pay for it all, including sure. a public option, let's just say. How does someone who's lost their job pay for health insurance. Great that it's available, but they right. can't afford it. Well, and uh, that's the beauty of health care reform. I mean, a lot of people like the plan they have. They forget that their plan is becoming increasingly expensive, and whether they've lost their job or not, they're not going to be able to afford their own health care in the future. Uh, and this bill is geared towards trying to address that. I will say that the overall costs of the House uh, Committee bill uh, still a little high need to be worked on. But to your point about if I've lost a job, what am I going to do? Uh, what we have in here is affordability credits for folks. And it's modeled, I think, a little bit on what we already do here in Oregon, where we give people a subsidy to help buy insurance, uh, either private or public. Uh, not employer-sponsored insurance. You have to pony up on your own for that. But for other public or private insurance, uh, you can get a subsidy scale to your income uh, to help you afford it, even though you don't have a lot of money. And that's the beauty of health care reform. So you would support, then, the public option, as I yes. understand it, correct? How about the end-of-life issue that has become yeah. such a controversial flashpoint? Do you, where do you stand on that? Well, I think that's something, again, that's been a total uh, uh, large amount of misinformation. Uh, if you read the bill, uh, end-of-life counts counseling when you're a senior citizen is optional. You know, if you don't want to talk to your doctor about it, that's fine. You don't have to do that. Uh, but there's a lot of folks, my grandfather included, uh, that welcome the opportunity to actually sit down, have some quality time with their physician or their caregiver, and talk about different options for them. Uh, he was 98 years old, had colon cancer, and had to make some decisions, and, and I was pleased to have that opportunity. I want physicians to get paid to be able to do that so that they will take time and take care of my parents or my grandparents. Okay, a couple quick questions. Sure. The president seems to have backed off of the public option. Do you think that's part of the ultimate bill in the end? Uh, good question. Uh, I, I wish I could put my Karnak hat on and say, Joe, but uh, uh, I think some form of uh, public competition with private enterprise is going to be there. I don't know the ultimate form. Uh, if I look closely at the Senate uh, bill, it looks like we're talking more terminology than we are substance. And uh, again, I think it's tough to argue with competition. Do you think this bill gets passed in the fall? Good question. Uh, I think that uh, a health care bill will come out uh, by the end of the year. Uh, good chance the, the House will do something probably in September if I was to bet. Uh, but I don't think that's definitely going to be the final version. A lot, more, a lot more room and opportunity for people to comment to come. We had Senator Merkley on a little while ago, and I'll ask you the same question I asked him. Six months in office, what's no. been the biggest surprise or challenge that you didn't expect? Well, the pace of work has been the biggest uh, surprise. You've a lot on your plate. Holy smokes. I mean, I'm a reader. Uh, veterinarian, used to doing a lot of reading. Legislator here in our great state. Mm -hmm. So I'm used to doing reading, but uh, it has been uh, difficult to keep up. Uh, but it's good. I mean, I'd rather deal with these issues than a lot of others. 
Uh, and I say the other thing is, despite what you see on TV and some of the rhetoric, uh, my colleagues uh, in Washington, D.C. are really good to work for and work with, regardless of uh, what political party they come from. They're really good folks and really have, I think, America's interest at heart. And you used to shovel a lot of manure, which helps you in this job. <laughs> yes, sir, it does. I also <laughs> recognize I'm going to get kicked, bit, or scratched. Okay. So. <laughs> that all works. Congressman, great to see you. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> Time for the web.